Losing a loved one is one of the hardest things that we will all have to face. And the depth of the pain that, that comes from that is undescribable. It's that, that emptiness that sits inside your chest. It's the moments of, of disbelief and that, that pain, knowing that you'll never be able to see them again. When you realize that you'll never be able to see their smile or, or feel their embrace. And it's a feeling that feels so profound that it's, it's unexplainable. And if you've been there, you know exactly what I mean. And when somebody that we love passes, we're gonna go, we are going to go through a range of emotions. Sadness, loneliness, anger, helplessness, and of course, grief. This feeling can be extremely, extremely overwhelming. And at times we can even wonder if we'll ever be able to overcome it, or if, if we'll, we will actually ever be able to recover. But grief, it's not just sadness. It's a, it's a complex journey navigating through all of those intense emotions in a world that that person no longer exists or is no longer present. Welcome back to another episode of Sweat Talk. My name is Chad. And in today's video, I'm gonna share my own journey with, with grief and loss and what I've, what I've learned about healing from that loss. And I'll understand that this isn't some one size fits all solution because everybody's grief is different. But I hope that that by sharing my experience and, and this insight, you might be able to find some, some sort of comfort and maybe even some, some guidance on your journey. Because when we lose a loved one, it, it often feels like the, the ground has been ripped from underneath us. The entire world changes and, and we're left to figure out how to navigate and live in this new reality. And grief is it's, it's deeply personal because it's a, it's a mix of memories, emotions, maybe regrets, and even reflections. And for me, I come from a, a large biological family, a large family. I'm the youngest of six siblings, six biological siblings. And I've, I've experienced loss many times. I've lost all four of my grandparents. I've lost my mother. But the hardest loss that I ever faced was the loss of my older sister. My sister was my best friend for as long as I can remember. And she was a beautiful person, just kind, caring, inside and out and when she passed away it was the worst day of my life but in that moment i was able to realize how fragile our life really is and ultimately losing her changed me it made me more aware of of how important and how, how valuable each and every day actually is and that i need to be able to cherish the people that are around me while i can that was just over nine years ago and you're not supposed to be losing your siblings in their 30s but when we lose somebody that we love somebody who we are close to the emotions are going to come in waves, or some might even call them stages, because that, that grief actually happens in, product, in predictable stages. There's shock, denial, anger, depression, bargaining, and eventually there needs to be acceptance. And just because these stages exist, it doesn't mean that, that everybody is going to go through them in the same order or in the same way. Hello. There may be times where, where you feel like you're moving forward, but only, only to be swept back by, by a memory or a date or, or just or something that reminds you of them, and that's perfectly normal. And understand that the grieving, it, it's not just some, it's not like a straight line. And some days it'll feel like you're moving through that process just fine, and other days you're right back at square one. And something that I've learned is grieving, grieving is is, is less about getting over it, and more about more about learning how to live with it. Because you're not, you're not supposed to forget that person or, and you're not supposed to erase that pain. But rather over time, you, you learn how to carry it and you learn how to grow around that grief. There is a reality that we all have to face and that is that we are going to lose loved ones. It is a morbid thought and it's something that we don't want to think about, but it is a reality and it is a fact. And if we are able to, 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 to face that reality, we will be able to value the time that we have with those people even more. And when I, when I lost my sister, it, it forced me to face my own mortality. It made me realize that tomorrow is never guaranteed, and that was an extremely powerful awakening for me. It made me appreciate the moment in saying and doing what actually matters now. Because there is a reality that at one point in our lives, tomorrow will not come. At some day, at some point, we will not see tomorrow. And even though this is a morbid idea, or this does sound morbid, if we're able to look at the silver lining, this realization, it can, be, it can be grounding and transformative. It can even be comforting 
knowing that life is precious. Hey, bud. Hello. And I, I believe that that's something that we should all carry forward in their, in their memory. Because in every single situation, no matter how painful, we can choose to search for the meaning. Because grief is raw. It can be all-consuming. But in that darkness, we can also find light. We, we have the opportunity and the ability to ask, to ask ourselves, how would our loved one want us to live? Would they want me to be trapped in, in sadness? Or would they want me to live my life fully? I know for certain our loved ones, they wouldn't want us to dwell on their loss or dwell on their passing and carry that, that weight on our shoulders for the rest of our lives. They would want us to, to move forward. They would want us to move forward and, and find joy again and live our lives to the fullest in their memory. Because we have that choice to either focus on sorrow or search for something good in their honor. And this doesn't mean that you need to pretend to be okay when you're not. It doesn't mean to ignore the pain that you're experiencing. It means give yourself permission to feel that pain, to feel everything while also making space and healing. It means giving yourself permission to feel everything while making space and healing. If it's used right, grief, grief can teach us to live fully. And when we experience that loss, we're, we're reminded that, that our lives are finite we do not have endless tomorrows. When we live to, in honoring those people that we've lost, we can choose to, to live. We can choose to live each day with a purpose, to cherish those moments that we have and, and to be present every single day. Because I know for sure in, in my situation, I know this is what my loved ones would want. They'd want us to continue to live life and, and find happiness and live a life that they would be proud of. And we are able to use that source of that pain for a source of strength and use it as a reminder that, that we're still here and that there is still time to make the most out of our lives. Think of, think of the good times and, and all those memories that you shared with that loved one and let those moments inspire you to live with gratitude because each and every day is, is a gift even, even when it's hard to see it that way. And sometimes those hardest days, they're the ones that teach us the most about being alive. And dealing with a loss, it's it's not easy, but there are some, some steps that you can take to help you through that journey. And number one is you need to be able to allow yourself to feel and, and allow yourself to, to feel that anger, that, that frustration and that sadness. Because suppressing those feelings, all it does is prolong the process. And give yourself permission to feel those, to feel that pain without judgment. Number two, you can lean on support because you do not have to go through this alone. You can use friends, you can use family. There's, there's, there, there's support groups out there or you can seek professional help. And ultimately all of those can make a world of difference. And if you say, well, I'm the last one, I don't have any support, of, any, any form of support group, you could, you could look up an, an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting and the people there would, would welcome you with open arms. There is a place, there is a support group for all of us, no matter what. Because talking about your loss to, uh, to, to other people, it can help provide us comfort. And number three, finding ways to honor their memory. And this could be through some some personal ritual, a celebration of life, or, or a small gesture that, that reminds you of them. It could be as, small, as simple as, as lighting a candle or, or going and visiting a place that you both loved. And number four, you need to focus on self-care because grief, ultimately, it takes a toll on your mind and your body. So you need to take care of yourself. Exercise, eat well, eat good, nutritious food, and get plenty of rest. And even if these things feel small in the beginning, they can do massive things for your healing process in the future and in the future. Number five, you need to be able to give yourself time because healing is not on a schedule and I don't feel that it's something that should be rushed. Don't rush yourself and don't let other people try to pressure you to move on. You need to be able to grieve at your own pace. And in doing so, you need to remember that it's okay to go back and grieve from time to time. Number six, you need to seek purpose in the pain. You need to find that purpose in your pain because losing somebody will change your perspective. It can help you see what matters most and you can use this to shape a life that truly matters or a life that aligns with your values. Grieving is one of the hardest things that we will ever do. It's one of the, one of the hardest journeys that, that every one of us will walk. And there's no easy way around it. There's no magic formula, no way to, to just snip, snap your fingers and make all of that pain disappear. 
But in navigating this journey, we can find strength and eventually we can find a renewed sense of purpose. And if, you're, if you are grieving right now, know that you are not alone because there is countless other people who know exactly what you're going through. I shouldn't say exactly, there are countless other people who know what you are going through. And even though every, every grief, even though every grief journey is unique, there's comfort in knowing that we are not alone. There's comfort knowing that healing is possible. Your loved one may no longer be here physically, but their, their memory and spirit and impact still remain. Let that be a source of strength and let that be your guide as you, as you navigate down this path. And over time, you'll, you will find that, over time, you'll, you will find that that grief is a part of who you are, but not something that defines you. It's, it's something that, that deepens your capacity for, for empathy, love, and gratitude. It's something that can increase your ability for compa compassion. If you made it this far, do me a favor and go in the comments section and write the word grief. Just that one word. Even if we haven't lost a loved one yet, I do believe it's necessary to support those who have. Going through that grief, going through that pain, that trauma, people need to be able to feel the support and the love from all of us. So we can show each other support with that, with that one word, grief, and it also helps support the channel. If you guys are gonna go buy something off of Amazon, check out the link in the, in the description. If you use that link, it'll, it'll be a way that, that you can also help financially support the channel that doesn't cost anything additional. And I would truly appreciate it. I appreciate all of your guys' generosity. I wanna thank you for showing up. I hope you guys are showing up for yourselves. Thank you for all of your support and the kindness that you guys are giving. And with that, I hope each and every one of you has a wonderful day. Peace.